What's good friendlies and non-friendlies, today I figured I'd share the project and update the two possible endings that I have out of four and some gameplay updates that I've made. I really focused in on the gameplay and as much as I possibly could to make this a fresh experience. So everything from the very beginning of the game between the choices whether you want to be the female version of the Slayer or the male version of the Slayer, they all have a and an effect of how the game will play out as you go on and even to the very first battle tutorial fight which was before unwinnable but now I've made changes to make it a winnable exchange with a lot of luck involved when you win giving you a, a very powerful item What I like to do with my projects, I like to give a reward for everything unique that you set out to do. Whether it is choosing a, a, a specific path or whether it's going out of your way to find lore or, or story points. I like to, to reward the player and reward their experience by adding something unique. So to start the game you are giving a choice to either fetch for items or fetch for secret goods or you can go directly into building your your player's stats One of the things that I really tried to focus on in this game is by adding sound effects that that are satisfying to listen to. You know, I like to say uh, things that your ears can chew on. That's been a focus of mine from day one. This fight was normally a master. Just hit the buttons until you beat these enemies. But I, want, I felt like the gameplay was getting a bit too stale, so I added a new dynamic to the gameplay to add a bit more tension to each and every fight. So now, not only do you have to worry about enemies being stronger than you, but now you have to worry about a new status effect combination, which immediately puts you in jeopardy. They'll debuff you, and when they debuff you, along with the additional effect, they're also tenderizing you for depth attack take place. So the counterplay for the death attack is to use a guard. A guard will cost you more stamina than a parry, but it'll protect you from an instant death. And I sprinkled this across the board throughout the entire game for each enemy, so so the instant KOs don't really seem like they're out the blue, although they can happen, and if they do happen that's just unlucky, but they usually have a tell for when they're about to happen because the AI will usually debuff your character and then it'll give you a chance for the counterplay to use a guard to prevent the instant KO from happening. So what you would want to do is you want to make sure that you always have enough to protect yourself from that scenario. And I think that's an interesting new addition to this game that really lifens things up quite a bit for every single enemy so you don't really want to take your time you know, dealing with even the minorest of enemies because you don't know when they could pull pull out some really nasty stuff. Now with this game, I think one of the things that I really wanted to show off was just how much 
each experience could vary from the previous. I wanted to have a lot of replayability. You know, and that goes from that stems from having everything from the very beginning of the game, having a choice and having that choice having an actual effect on how you play the game, to having winnable, unwinnable fights that give you rewards, an additional bonus, a bonus start. You know, to having you know a lot of scenarios of, of that sort where you can alter sort of how things will play out. And then actually giving you a benefit rather than just being uh, for bragging rights. And so we're going to, I'm going to skip ahead a bit and we're going to get to one of the endings. I think it's the ending number, it's the true ending. And in order to get this ending, you have to do a bit of detective work within the game. You have to find a lot of lore pieces that can clue together for your character to identify what's hap really happening and who's really behind uh, their death and their misfortune. And after you clue those things together, the event will shift into the true ending, which will give you a, a much harder final fight there are a total of four final fights in the game and each path they're, they're difficult in their own way and so right here I'm just editing putting together I'm in debug mode so I'm I'm, I'm cheating so uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna be cheating to get through these fights since I didn't go through the natural progress I'm gonna give myself the easy wins if I can and setting up uh, setting up uh, the, the map because the map doesn't it goes to an, a natural function where the event that it would shift for the map is missing so uh, you know I'm doing it manually right now Now one thing I always I've always wanted to do with this game is I wanted to have each of these four endings having a unique credit roll ending but since I, I ran out of space it's kind of I don't have enough space to have the actual ending sequence be different for different for across the board but I put in enough where I put it enough where the finale where you you meet the final boss and that sequence within itself is within itself a sequence that is unique enough that I it can stand on its own That since I'm in debug mode, I'm obviously I'm cheating, and because of that, 
the boss fight, this boss actually doesn't have their proper stats. As the game goes on, what would normally happen is the boss increases based on your activities and how you perform within the chapter 2 map. And since obviously I skipped that entirely and just went directly to the boss, the boss is going to be extremely low level. And that that's going to be why I'm going to be able to hang into this fight. So it's, it's not like, you know, if the boss is easy. I can guarantee you 1000% that I think I might have made the bosses too hard. I think that they're probably too hard, but I don't think that they're unwinnable. You know, so just, just trust me on that when I say that this game is absolutely hard and borderline. I feel like I should make it easier, but I'm not going to because I know that it's winnable and it's beatable. So I just wanted to put that out there. This game is harder than it's ever been. So that's one ending and here we go back into a, a new starting sequence, the variables of how this can go that this beginning fight is not easy either and it differs between which character you pick. This character is is better with magic and has less health so you're going to want to change your strategy a bit. You can't give away any turns because this boss is made to just instant kill you on the very first turn. It requires a lot of luck, but also you need to plan it out just a little bit. Since I didn't win, 
I don't get the special item, the flash guard, which is a very valuable item for later on. And here, one thing I tried to add was because adding lore within itself, I feel like it's boring. So one thing that I tried to do with my project is I tried to add a benefit for finding everything, whether it's talking to an NPC, finding lore pieces, or anything side quest related to have a benefit or reward factor. You know, something extra gameplay wise that you can chew on. I always add something of worth to go along with that extra dosage of non-gameplay to give you know a reason for going to that location and there are multiple goods that you can discover in this oasis the opening world map that you'll come back to multiple times So I usually have story bits and, and cutscenes and some of the cutscenes I feel are you could that I feel go on for too long you can pretty much you can skip. You know, I don't think that they're too crucial, so I have the option to skip. And you know, you, you won't miss too much, but it, it does add some tidbits of what you if you wanted a more fuller experience. And so here we're going into the secret ending number two. This ending is probably the most, the most secret, the most obscure, and definitely, I say because of that, is one of the harder ones. Simply because you can only know once you know. You know, I have clues, and the the key items that you pick up will guide you along the way. But you have to really, really, really be paying attention and using your your third eye to actually find everything within this this world and I think this secret is probably going to be the coolest one simply because it comes out of nowhere and I think I think it's I think it's a nice addition yeah I think the ending of it is probably my favorite that I've added a cool surprise So yeah, uh, Raroni Kenshin, I, I've added a mini Raroni Kenshin saga into my project. In order to, to actually access this saga, which is what I call round three, you have to you have to actually beat him. He's a very difficult fight. He he's I would consider him a boss fight, definitely, but he has two rounds. You don't have to beat him one round, you have to beat him in his his second round. His second round is the only way that you can actually obtain the tools you need to actually go through with the Ravoni Kenshin mini saga. Up in arms trying to actually win and trying to beat this. So round one doesn't really matter, but if you lose round one, you're pretty much up to his mercy because he is very very fast and because of that he's just most likely going to use his ultimate attack and if you lost the previous round it's going to KO you so you are going to want to win both rounds or at least be prepared if you do lose the first round and, and try to plan it out where you can make a comeback. And then you get the option to use Kenshin as a character. Obviously bootleg Kenshin, you know, bootleg, I should throw that in. 
you know, from Bootleg Productions. And we're going to take a look at his move list up, 99 agility, you know, he's extremely buff, but he's not OP, he can very easily lose within this game, and he can very easily be o overpowered in this game as well, you just have to know how to use him. His character type, his gameplay type rather, is completely different from every other character thus far. So you're just going to take some getting used to if you play the game up till now to, to using him as he's more frail with his AP, HP value and his MP is locked to his HP as well so if you use his stamina you're also draining his health which is going to make you easier to kill so you're going to have to play your cards right with him and I feel like at first I was thinking I feel like this final area for this ending path isn't long enough or lengthy enough but I feel because of how challenging it is and how out of nowhere it is but also how challenging it is and also how much you still have to use your brain to actually progress I feel like because of all of these things mentally it's lengthy because there's no guarantee that you can actually make it through So as you can see, Kenshin is very, very buff in that using his ultimate move will most likely kill just about every enemy, but in the hand the off chance that they don't they don't get killed by the, by that move, you're leaving yourself very vulnerable and that is usually an instant game over for you. So you have to be very careful when you want to use it, you want to wear your opponent down. And I try to make it as accurate to the show as I possibly could. So you you know, so you're gonna have to just just really play your cards right with Kenshin. So even he's I guess you would call him a glass cannon in a way. One of his strengths is going to be his speed, definitely. His speed will make it so that there is almost impossible for him to be touched by any physical attack in the game. But that doesn't make him unbeatable. Because everything that he has, his final boss has as well. So you're going to need every bit of what you have and more if you actually want to win this final pathway one thing though that his because of his speed is so quick 
you do get to do your five hit combos in the game, even though you know it's not possible to name as a move or actually have them do a five hit combo. You do get five turns to do whatever it is you're going to do. Probably more than that, but you know you you have the option in there. So now we get to the final fight, Makoto Sishio, who I think is the coolest villain, one of the coolest villains in animation. So obviously I, I'm, I'm not that well equipped for this fight. I think I'm just going to cheat this one if you don't mind. The ending of the fight is actually not the ending. There's actually one more bit that is not combat related that you have to survive. I'm not sure if it's messed up or not, but I try to make it as accurate as I possibly could. And you know, uh, good luck, I guess. <laughs> And with that, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Yeah, I would like to play through this myself, you know, but my P PlayStation 3 is an old bird. And RPG Maker 3 
what my project uses too much of its energy and it after certain battles my ps3 just can't handle it so it, it such it so far i think if i got a new ps3 i'd be able to handle it but you know them be the breaks so uh, i'll bid you guys further ado make peace be with always keep your heads up do this those spells out of you stay cool like this content be sure to social love but always be sure to social love to the people that matter to you because i to y'all and be cool peace